Okay, everybody, give me just a second. <clears throat> I know I'm making the video. It's like 2.40 in the morning. And I'm not waiting for anybody to come into the room because I'm just making the video. Those of you who've been following me for a long time, you know when I'm driving, I get a lot of my information from Spirit. And I was just on my way home from work. So I'm making this video to put it out there really fast. And I'm calling it like... <clears throat> it's opening up your eyes. It's a preset crash course in reality from Jupiter. Because Zeus came in. Because <laughs> Zeus came in and made sure that I was getting this through my head so I could make this video for you. It's making me very thirsty. <clears throat> okay, before I get into any of it, this does have to do with Jupiter being in Pisces, <coughs> which is also Zeus. However, I'm going to go back for a minute. I'm going to remind you guys. We are in the age of Aquarian. The age of Aquarius. We are in the age of Aquarius. However, <coughs> we still have so much age of Piscean that have to be unraveled. Or that is still unraveling before the true age of Aquarius can really come into tune, come into being. And we need to remember that because that has a lot to do with what we're going to be seeing in the next couple years and in the next couple months. Because what I was being given by my guides and from Zeus and in general is. With Jupiter jumping into Pisces, we're going to be having a major crash course in reality, but also in fantasy, an illusion. You are being given the free will to completely drown your sorrows or to face, to face the music. <laughs> is what I was just getting. Face the music or drown your sorrows. And this has everything to do with that Piscean energy that's trying to unravel still while Jupiter now is in Pisces. Jupiter is higher knowledge, higher ascending information. I like to call Jupiter as the higher self. A part of you that is connected to Jupiter is the higher self. However, Pisces energy is, I, I like to say, I was explaining it to somebody earlier tonight. Pisces energy is, is, wants to believe in all of the good things in life. And they want to have hope and compassion and love. But sometimes you need to see the truth. This is like Pisces people tend to be the ones who bring home the stray dog. And sometimes, good morning, honey, Molly, good morning, I can barely see it. Um, sometimes the situation is very simple. I mean, sometimes things are not good and you can't try to change the vibration into being something that's good. It needs to change. And this is why Pis Pisces people often get taken advantage of. In this level, because they, they hope that people are who they want them to be, but sometimes people are not who you want them to be. And I'm saying this because Jupiter coming into Pisces now is, like I said, he's going to be unraveling the illusions. But there's only a small frame of this being a preset to get yourself directed. And I'm going to go into this in a minute. I'm just, I'm walking you through it. This is, there is a time frame on this part of a cycle within the cycles. Like I said, I've been getting a lot of that lately. There's cycles within cycles within cycles. And there's a small time frame for you to acknowledge that this part of this pre-cycle is starting. Because there's like a standstill and like a, 
the way spirit gives me, it's like a mechanical malfunction. Like if the clock, you know, like, like steampunk, when you think of like the clocks and the, the material that is used or the metals and, and how they turn, it's like something's not turning quite right. And that's going to be because we're going to be looking at Jupiter going retrograde and is going to retrograde out of Pisces, go back into Aquarius. At the same time, it'll be in Aquarius at the same time that Saturn will also still be in retrograde. Okay? So, this is why I'm giving you there's a time frame on this. Jupiter is about to blow the doors open on illusion and fantasy. But he's giving you a complete free will card to drown yourself in the bullshit, put yourself back to sleep, and drown your sorrows, and n never come back. Like, like, what I'm being given is, like, seas at, like, 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 that seas, like, ships at bay. Like, ships that are outside of the water, like, out on the shore, but haven't docked, and they can't come in. So that's what I'm getting. It's like ships that can't come in. And he's also giving you a full blessing. A full blessing and a pat on the back of being able to go, if you face the music and you face the situations and you see through the bullshit of the illusion, the delusion, the fantasy, then I'll give you the pat on the back and I'll reward you. Jupiter brings manifestation no matter what it is, good or bad. He asks you what you want. But like I said, you're having a standstill, like a mechanical malfunction. And this is because, like I said, Jupiter is only going to be in Pisces until June. June is, it's not until June, but until June. Now hear me out. He will be there until June going direct. This is forward movement. We're talking about him leaving the 11th house, going into the 12th house on a universal scale. And then when he retrogrades, he's going to retrograde back from the 12th house and then back into the 11th house. Okay? Where then Saturn will also be in retrograde with it. This is going to be speaking to us directly of boundaries, responsibilities, authority, structure. But it's also going to be, you know, that illusion, delusion, fantasy, facing the music. 12th house energy, before we even get to that 11th house, like I said, Jupiter will be in Pisces until June, uncovering the illusion, showing you where you've been in full fantasy and and bullshit in your head and, and the society around you. And then it will go back into Aquarius in August, but it will stay in retrograde until October. So it's talking about that 12th house energies until August. And we're talking about Grief, sorrow, shame, blame, insecurities, the lies you tell yourself to make yourself believe that you're okay. This is why I said free will to drown yourself in the sorrows and ignore it and be one of those ships at bay or face the music and come on the shore. This is the reason why also that 11th house, which is Aquarius, has to do with dreams, goals, dreams, ambitions, but just as evenly important. It has everything to do with your groups, your memberships, and form your friends. Because if... You aren't surrounded by the right friends, groups, memberships that support you. Then what are you doing with them? And the best way of me explaining this is what Spirit gave me. So, I love how Spirit gives me information, but it's because they know how my head works. <laughs> so, okay, my head works a little twisted. But anyway, um, what they gave me to help me understand is it has to do with... Is a movie, okay? Well, I'm just going to explain it. What they gave me is a movie that 
I've seen a million times, and it's one of the Jurassic Park movies. And anyway, in the movie, they've gone back on one of the islands that have all the dinosaurs, and, you know, they're in trouble. So, one of them has a phone, and they're calling one of the girls from the first movie, who happens to be their friend. But she doesn't actually get the message, but she puts two and two together. And when they finally get rescued at the end of the movie, she's called in, what is it, the National Guard or the military? She's called in the big guns to come and save them. This is what I'm trying to get at. Who are you associated with? Your friends, your families, your groups, your things you're a part of. Are you a part of the people who have your back? Or are you a part of... The people who have your back, but with an agenda for themselves. See, in the movie, she didn't get anything. She's not even shown again. She didn't get anything for calling in the National Guard to bail their ass out. She just is that kind of a friend. So what kind of people are you associating yourself with? Are you associating yourself with those who's going to call the National Guard in? To bail you out. Whoever your National Guard is. Or are you. Staying in line with people. Who really have an agenda. And the only reason they have your back is. For their own agenda. Like I said. It's 12th house is issues. Grave sorrow shame blame. Insecurities. It's the skeletons in the closet and the lies we tell ourselves versus the people we concern ourselves with. The, and are they helping us go forward in life? Are they going to help us get through and create the structure and the foundation that we want as we move forward? Or are they actually, you know, something that's not going to set well when the pavement dries. I'm going to put a lump in it. Are they going to be there for you? Are they going to actually help you set those boundaries and still love you when the chips are down? This is part of what we're being told to look at. You need to, I'm also being given elephant medicine, which means patience, wisdom, loyalty, and very strong family bonds. Like I said, are they going to be with you when the chips are down? Or is that when they're going to turn their back? And are they going to call in the National Guard to bail your ass out because they love you? Or would they just leave you there on that island and not think twice about it? These are some of those things that you're going to need to acknowledge as you're going through the next couple months. Especially as we go into the retrogrades of Jupiter and of Saturn, but this is the crash course in reality of going, I'm giving you it up front to see what's going to happen once Jupiter comes out of retrograde, because you're telling him right now what you want to manifest. So start manifesting correctly. I love you guys. Bye.